In the sepia-tinted tapestry of television history, there exists a treasure trove of classics that have woven themselves into the fabric of our collective nostalgia. Among these shimmering threads, one stands out like a well-worn detective's badge pinned to the lapel of memorized iconic 1951 TV series, Dragnet. Can you recall that very first time you stumbled upon this black and white masterpiece? Perhaps it was a lazy afternoon or a quiet evening when, with the turn of a dial, you found yourself transported into the gritty realm of Detective Joe Friday and his unyielding pursuit of justice. As the grainy images flickered across the screen, did you find yourself entangled in the city's shadows, navigating the dimly lit alleyways alongside Friday and his partner? The stoic expressions, the clipped dialogue you very seen painted a vivid portrait of a world steeped in mystery and moral ambiguity. And what about those moments that left an indelible mark on your mind? Was it the suspenseful drumbeat of the iconic theme music that quickened your pulse, signaling the impending unraveling of a case? Or was it Friday's unwavering commitment to uncovering the truth, even when faced with the most enigmatic of puzzles? Now, picture yourself seated comfortably as we peel back the layers and dive into a trove of random facts about this timeless series. These tidbits will transport you behind the scenes, shedding light on the show's inception, its impact on pop culture, and the faces that brought its characters to life. So, as we venture into the world of Dragnet, let's unlock the vault of intriguing insights that await. Dragnet Series 1951, a trailblazing TV classic and a groundbreaking move that left an indelible mark on television history. The iconic 1951 TV series Dragnet achieved a rare feat, redefining the relationship between the small screen and cinema. As the show's gripping narrative unfolded, a new chapter emerged, with a theatrical spin-off taking center stage. Midway through its engrossing run, Dragnet birthed a movie spin-off, a double first that resonated through American TV lore. For the first time, a television series gave rise to a feature film, a testament to its immense popularity. What's more, the cinematic offshoot hit theaters while the original series was still captivating audiences, a revolutionary move that cemented the show's cultural significance. The series, led by the unflappable Joe Friday and his partners, utilized the radio call sign 1K80, a trio of symbols that encapsulated their mission. One symbolized the hub of law enforcement, the police headquarters, while K signified the investigative services, often dubbed as King. The number 80 became their unit identifier, embodying their dedicated pursuit of justice. Dragnet, The Big Little Jesus, a standout episode penned by Richard L. Breen, marked a pivotal moment. Breen's sole contribution to the series, it took shape only after he agreed to lend his penmanship to the 1954 movie adaptation of the show. This creative synergy added depth to the show's narrative, revealing how television and cinema interwove, leaving an everlasting imprint on storytelling. Amidst the neon-lit streets of 1950s Los Angeles, Dragnet illuminated the television landscape. Its daring leap into film territory, the resounding echoes of 1K80, and the unforgettable characters led by Joe Friday, all coalesced to shape a television legacy that continues to captivate audiences to this day. For aficionados and newcomers alike, Dragnet remains a touchstone, a testament to innovation and storytelling prowess. As we reflect on this milestone, we're reminded of the audacity of a bygone era, when a simple TV series altered the course of entertainment history. Jack Webb's The Badge, unveiling the unseen realities of Dragnet in the annals of television history, Dragnet stands as a bastion of law enforcement storytelling. Yet, beneath the veneer of its procedural drama lay untold narratives deemed too contentious for primetime audiences. Enter Jack Webb's magnum opus, The Badge. This revelatory book, shrouded in whispers, reveals a trove of tales that even the daring show shied away from portraying in full detail. The detective drama, a staple of 1951 television, brought to life the unvarnished work of law enforcement officers. But the sanitized standards of the time demanded a cautious approach to sensitive subjects. As such, while Dragnet hinted at the shadows lurking within society touching on murder, rape, and child molestation, it didn't plunge headlong into their dark depths. The small screen's limits hemmed in the stark realities. Yet, it was in the printed word that Webb's uncensored vision found a home. The badge, a title echoing with authority, unfurled the stories that the television series dared not fully unveil. In these pages, the unfiltered truth emerged, 
casting a revealing light on the grim corners of the human experience. Controversy in Candor thrived within the covers. The tales featured the shocking, the harrowing, and the wrenching. Webb's selection was unflinching, unapologetic, and hauntingly human. Such narrativess filled with violence, despair, and moral quandaries formed the backbone of the badge, leaving readers with a mirror to society's underbelly that television had only fleetingly shown. In contrast to the sanitized portrayals on screen, the book was unburdened by the era's restraints. The subjects, stripped bare of euphemisms, resonated with a reality that challenged the prevailing norms. The badge became a testament to Webb's audacious dedication to realism, offering a literary bridge between the restrained airwaves and the unfiltered pages. As we revisit the era of Dragnet, let us remember the duality of its narrativion played out on the screen. The other inked onto pages. The badge gave voice to the silent stories, refusing to bow to the era's reticence. Jack Webb's creation continued to shape the way we engage with law enforcement tales, unraveling the complexities that lie beneath the surface. In the realm of Dragnet, truth wore many face sewn for television, another for print. Both were integral to our understanding of a world perpetually grappling with darkness and light. Dragnet's shifting partners, a behind-the-scenes shuffle in the realm of 1950s television, where police procedurals held a tight grip on viewers' attention, Dragnet emerged as a beacon of realism. Yet, behind its resolute facade lay a series of unexpected challenges that prompted a rotating cast, leaving an indelible mark on the show's trajectory. During its sophomore season, Dragnet adopted an alternating airing schedule, a move that raised eyebrows among its fervent audience. Artin Yarborough, the original counterpart to the steadfast Sergeant Friday, had tragically passed away within the initial season's turmoil, throwing the production into disarray. The untimely death of Yarborough necessitated a complex juggling act, taxing the filming schedule to its limits. The show's creators orchestrated several cast changes, striving to find a fitting partner for Friday's unwavering resolve. Enter Ben Alexander, who would eventually cement his place as Friday's new partner, Frank Smith. Alexander's journey to becoming a mainstay on the show is an intriguing tale in itself. Initially apprehensive, he had only intended to partake in a single episode. Fate, however, had a different plan. The audience's response and the on-screen chemistry between Alexander and the formidable Jack Webb convinced him to linger longer, soon finding himself intertwined with the show's legacy. Behind every alteration and partner lay a tale of its own. Barney Phillips, grappling with a unique habit of moistening his lips, faced challenges that extended beyond his acting prowess. Herbert Ellis, initially cast with temporary intentions, was abruptly ushered out due to a striking resemblance to Friday himself, an irony that couldn't be ignored. Amidst these intricacies, the series drew inspiration from the most unexpected quarters. Gene Roddenberry, a future luminary in the realm of science fiction with the creation of Star Trek, was among the many real-life police officers who lent their creativity to Dragnet. His contributions to the show's storytelling illustrate the intricate web connecting seemingly disparate narratives in the entertainment universe. As the show continued its run, the ebb and flow of partners settled with Ben Alexander's Frank Smith emerging as Friday's enduring collaborator. This evolution from uncertainty to stability exemplified the very essence of Dragnet, an unflinching dedication to realism amidst the vicissitudes of both script and life. The classic wheels of justice, police cars in 1,951 seconds Dragnet and the bustling world of 1950s television. Where gritty crime dramas began to carve their niche, one show stood as a true emblem of authenticity, Dragnet. Amid the tales of crime and pursuit, a subtle star emerged, the police cars themselves. Owned by the production company, these vehicles provided an uncanny resemblance to their real-life counterparts patrolling the streets. The inaugural series cruised with Ford mainline sedans, mirroring the nationwide police fleet. Remarkably, a surviving mainline found new life in Fontana, Ka, fitted with a robust L-head V8 engine and manual transmission. Transitioning to the 1967-70 revival, the show showcased Ford Fairlane sedans tailored to detective units, a deviation from the LAPD's fleet. These cars, integral to the show's authenticity, became a testament to Dragnet's dedication to detail. 
Raymond Burr's intriguing portrayal in 1,951 seconds dragnet in the annals of television history. Raymond Burr's role in the 1951 TV series Dragnet stands as a noteworthy portrayal. The accomplished actor assumed the mantle of the real-life LAPD chief of detectives, Thad Brown, lending a riveting authenticity to the show's crime-solving narrative. Burr's embodiment of Chief Brown brought a new layer of realism to the police procedural drama, captivating audiences with his gravitas and skillful portrayal. His performance became a hallmark of the series, elevating the show's credibility and drawing viewers deeper into the gritty world of law enforcement. As Dragnet captured the imaginations of TV audiences, it achieved another distinction show's simultaneous run on both television and radio. This dual presence allowed fans to engage with their favorite detectives, Joe Friday and Frank Smith, across multiple mediums. The radio program's continuity with the TV series provided a seamless and immersive experience for listeners and viewers alike. Moreover, the series left an indelible mark on the music scene. In the summer of 1953, Ray Anthony and his orchestra recorded the iconic theme music aptly titled Dragnet. The composition soared to the top of the charts, becoming a million-selling hit and cementing its place in cultural history. Yet, the series' influence didn't stop there. The summer of 1953 witnessed the ascent of St. George and the Dragonette, a three-minute speaking satire that playfully riffed on the show's premise. Recorded by comedian Stan Freberg, co-writer Dawes Butler, in June 4, the witty piece tickled audiences' funny bones and climbed its way to the coveted one spot on the charts. In retrospect, the 1951 TV series Dragnet remains a cultural touchstone, bolstered by Raymond Burr's impactful portrayal and its unique dual presence on both radio and television. The series' musical legacy, from the unforgettable theme to the whimsical satire, further solidified its place in the pop culture pantheon. As the years have passed, Dragnet continues to echo its resounding influence on the entertainment landscape. As we bid adieu to the captivating world of the 1951 TV series, Dragnet, we're left with more than just a series of episodes. We're left with moments that have woven themselves into the fabric of our lives. It's not just a show, it's a portal to nostalgia, a reminder of simpler times when the crackling of the television was enough to spark excitement. As you reflect on the tales of Joe Friday and his unswerving pursuit of justice, think about how they resonated with your own journey. Perhaps it was the methodical unraveling of mysteries that mirrored your own problem-solving prowess. Or maybe it was the dedication to truth and honor that struck a chord in your own values. Dragnet isn't just a show you watched, it's a connection you formed. Now, it's your turn to share those cherished memories and thoughts. What was your favorite episode? Which character left an indelible mark on your heart? How has Dragnet shaped your perspective on crime, justice, and the human condition? Your story adds to the tapestry of collective experiences that this iconic series has evoked. Thank you for taking the time to journey down memory lane with Dragnet. Your reminiscences are the testament to the show's timeless appeal, a proof that its impact continues to transcend generations. So, let's keep the conversations alive, sharing our narratives and fostering a community that cherishes the legacy of Dragnet. Until then, take care and keep those memories close.